Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of interpenetration of solids. So in this video we're going to continue from our previous video introducing the vertical sections method of finding our points of interpenetration. This video is going to specifically look at solids where you have a turning point or where your points are going to have to go from one surface turning a corner to another surface. So we'll begin by just looking at our examples. Um, here we can see our 3D version of our objects, our front elevation and our plan view. And the objects that we have to deal with this time are a square-based pyramid and a triangular prism which has been inclined and pierces our pyramid on one side and then exits out on the far side. Now, this object differs from our previous one because in our previous example, we only had two surfaces, like on this side here, our prism is entering into our pyramid entirely on this surface here. But if we look at the far side, this edge here is going to be contained in the line 0, 6 and 7, whereas our first two edges here and here are going to be on the surface 0, 7 and 4. And the fact that they're on two different surfaces means that at some point our lines of interpretation are going to have to turn this corner here going from this surface to this surface here and that's what we call a turning point. So we're going to have a, a use our vertical sections method to calculate this turning point and that's what's that's what's new about this example here. In relation to how we're going to solve the question we're going to use our vertical sections method exactly like we had seen in our previous video. So the idea behind our vertical sections method is that we're going to take a slice out of our object with a vertical section, so like a sheet of glass standing up vertical, which contains our piercing edge and it slices our object or the surfaces of our object. So in our example here, we're going to put a our first vertical section on this edge here, which I've labeled up edge number one. So edge number one is going to be our piercing edge and we're going to cut through our pyramid here like so. So we're going to remove this portion of our pyramid. So we must first of all calculate our sliced surface like so. The way we do that is anywhere that our vertical section crosses our edges on our surface that's been sliced we project them up into our elevation. So if you look at it it's slicing the edge 4, 7 here so we bring it up into 4, 7 here. It's also slicing 5 and 4 and it's also slicing 0 and 4 as well. So there are edges which have been sliced giving us our sliced shape which we can see here in our 3D version. And then the idea is that we take our piercing edge and we continue it on until we see exactly where it crosses into the piece, where it enters into the piece and where it bursts out the far side. So there we are projected there which I've labelled up 1L. It's on edge number one and it's on the left hand side of the piece and we can project it down to plan to locate our finished point in plan and then we need to do the exact same on the opposite side to locate where it bursts out the far side. So that's 1R. There's 1R in plan. So that's our two points of interpenetration on that edge there. The idea then is to move our cutting plane back to contain our next point. So we do the same here. So there's edge number two and that's going to give us a new slice which we locate in exactly the same way. So anywhere it cuts our surfaces we project up to elevation giving us our cut surface and then we extend on our piercing edge to locate our point where it enters into the piece and our point here where it exits the piece. So that's our vertical section method exactly as we've seen in our last video and we do the exact same again moving it back one step further to our edge number three here and we get our new slice. So again it's going to be slicing the surface 0, 4 and 5 here and this time it's going to be on the opposite side slicing 0, 6 and 7. So it's a new surface that it's going to be slicing through. So we can see 0, 7, 0, 6 is going to be brought up to give us our cut there and then we have our opposite side here. So there's our cut surface and it's worthwhile noting that I didn't necessarily need to take up this line here. Um, I've only drawn that in just to show the full cut solid or cut surface. We only really need five to this point here because that's the, p the point that's going to give us our piercing point here, 3L. So again project it down to plan to complete the plan and then project it from the far side here to give us our projection and plan view here. 
So there are three edges, and in our previous example, they were the only edges that we needed to worry about. In this example here, we do have this turning point to concern ourselves with. And we'll just have a look at that here in our 3D video. So I've just completed the far side here. Let's just have a quick look at it and rotate the object around so that we can see. Well, here we have our object and we can see this time our piercing edge isn't on the prism, our piercing edge is on the pyramid and instead of piercing our surface on the pyramid, this time the surface it's piercing is on the prism. So we're basically swapping which of the solids our piercing edge is on and which of our surfaces is being cut. In this case we're going to place a cutting plane on our piercing edge on the prism or pyramid and we're going to be slicing up the prism. So the surface we're going to be slicing is going to be this surface here on our prism and this is going to be our piercing edge on our pyramid. So we also have a second point on the underside of our, our piece here so you can see there's our piercing edge here it enters into this surface here and it's going to enter or exit from the underside here so we're going to have two points we're going to have point number one where it enters into the piece on this surface here and we're going to have a second exit point where it comes out through the bottom of the underside of our piece. So we're going to have two points for our piercing edge here, an entry point and an exit point. Um, the approach we're going to take then is going to be exactly the same as our previous vertical sections, only this time we're going to slice our object so that it contains our piercing edge on the pyramid. So this is going to be our section, like so, containing our piercing edge. And like we said, the surface we're going to be cutting through is going to be this surface 2 and 3 here. So anywhere our piercing, or sorry, our uh, section cuts through this surface here, like before we're projecting it up into our elevation, so up like so, there's our point there where it cuts the top edge, edge number 2, and I've just extended on edge number 3 here so that I can see, well this is where it hits edge number 3 here, giving me my cut surface. Now I've continued on this point here where it crosses our sloping line here. I didn't need to do that. I'm only really concerned about this line here and this line here because that those two lines cross our piercing edge here like that, giving us our two points. Our entry point here, which is 7T, T for top, and we can project him down to give us our plan view, and we have our 7U for underside. Then, So there's our entry point and our exit point, which we're able to project down into our plan view to give us our entry point in plan and our exit point in plan, giving us our turning point. So these are our two turning points. Um, and looking at our object, there's our completed object like so. In our views here, where that we're just going to join up the dots to complete the object. So there it is there, looking from above, there'll be visible lines, and then working from the underside, we're going to have our hidden detail there, crossing through the underside of the piece. Exactly the same in our elevation, for the front of the object it's going to be visible and then working around the back of the object we're going to have our hidden detail like so. So there is our completed solid and um, complete with our turning points. Um, so really we're just using our um, vertical sections method to a fuller degree and in this case in there's no real points that we will be missing out on. Um, it's very useful if you have a 3D version in the question to help you visualize where the turning points are. This is one of the disadvantages of this method that it can be tricky to visualize where the object should turn but at the same time it's still a very very useful method to use. So that concludes the video and again hopefully I've, I hope you found some use for this. Um, thank you very much and for more videos stay tuned to either the website or to YouTube. So thank you very much.